uh, than it was at any point in the last couple of years. So we're um, now obviously we got a lot of games to go. <laughs> I'm just saying right now, after three, we, we've done a we've done a, uh, a pretty good job there. We're spending a lot more practice time on it, um, and we spent a lot of the off season on it, and that's been a positive. Um, you know, we certainly felt like with the uh, a young um, a young offense that when we did get down there, we were going to have to score touchdowns to be able to compete and win games. So that's been a positive. Uh, the the things we still got to work on is we are just a you know a long way away um, at probably the you know the the detail of those young receivers of being um, where they need to be and. Um, making plays and, and really uh, the finer points of our offense. So there we're improving. We've improved each game at that spot, uh, but we're still um, just a little nervous, uh, you know, that we're going to be where we need to be to win some of these games coming up. And, uh, you know, we are going to need to see some, some strides each week at that spot to be competitive. Obviously, it's a strange season in a multitude of ways, Coach Ruggiero. My question is, it's a, it's a weird break where you've got two out of three weeks off, and in the middle, you've got a game against an FCS team. Right. But had you seen enough prior to this kind of break to know what you needed to fix during this break? In other words, have you been able to, to utilize this time off as well as you'd hoped? Because did you get enough of a sample size to even know what you needed to fix? Right. No, that's a good question. Um, you know, I would say one of the the biggest things we need to fix is is unfixable by having two weeks off, which is we need we need those kids to get out there and play. You know, that's like that's really the number one thing we need. We need those kids to get out in a game atmosphere. Uh, with live bullets and have to react, um, you know, that's that's the number one thing we need. So I would have loved to have had another game this weekend uh, and had the bye week maybe later on in the season. Um, but, you know, to answer your question more specifically, uh, I, you know, I, I, I do think we know where our weaknesses are right now. Um, I do. I think we've got a pretty good feel of that. In the first couple of weeks, uh, you know, I know we, you know, we played, you know, as you said, an FCS opponent for, uh, this past week. But after playing Clemson and NC State, I think we got a pretty good feel uh, from that. Some things we certainly anticipated, and um, so I, I, I do think we know what we have to fix. We've had a good, some good time off uh, at trying to get some of these younger guys ready. Uh, but like I said, I just wish we had a game. Warren, talking about uh, the success in red zone offense, um, I think it was last year in the Florida State game was the first time we really saw the uh, running back direct snap with multiple tight ends in the game. Right. What what things did you try last year that led you to, to that being the, the successful adjustment that you guys made? And, and do you see that being a kind of a staple of the offense now moving forward, even though it was kind of born out of necessity in the middle of last season. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we're going to have that in every week. We've really expanded uh, what we're doing with it. We haven't even shown probably um, even 10% of what we can do at this point. So we have a lot that we've practiced um, that we haven't pulled out of the bag yet. It's a long season. So we're uh, so, like I said, we've we've spent a lot of time at building that package, you know, uh, maybe with a couple of other heavier sets with the direct snap to the back, as you mentioned. Um, you know, so that's that's been uh, a an emphasis. We've we've got it all in there. You'll continue to see it, um, and you'll continue to see us in spread sets down there too. Uh, and we've actually you know, we've, we've kind of alter our package down there in the spread sets a little bit too. And that's really, and Sam has really helped us. Sam's a smart kid. Uh, I think that's something also we were on, you know, a lot of times we were unsuccessful in the red zone. 
you know, Jamie was a great power runner and he could throw the ball to Sage and Scotty, you know, and all those things were, were great. Uh, but he was not great at getting us in the, in the right play. Um, you know, or getting, you know, if we had any type of check with me. Um, so we, we struggled in that area and that led to a lot of uh, field goals, to be honest with you. So Sam's done a great job of really, you know, we spent, you know, hours on, you know, hours and hours and hours on Zoom this summer just watching red zone tape. And, uh, you know, he really spent a lot of time to make sure that we were in um, the right play, the right adjustment down there. So in the spread sets, we've improved a little bit also, which has been nice. Given how, how rarely you and Dave want the offense to sub players in, how resistant were you guys to trying something that required putting two or three tight ends in the game or an extra offensive lineman in? Yeah, you know, um, I don't know if it was resistant, uh, but I think, you know, there's a, a couple of things. One, certainly when – when we did have Scotty and Sage in, you know, they're really, and, you know, on the outside, as you need to win one-on-ones down the red zone uh, as, as the box pack and, you know, pack, you know, packs up and the quarterback, you know, run provides an extra hat that Jamie provided. So that all made it easy to just keep going um, and not slow down. Uh, but when you look at our, our strengths and deficiencies right now, we're probably a little, uh, a little deficient at being able to make some one-on-one plays on the outside right now. Um, you know, Sam's an adequate runner, but I certainly don't want to shove him in there against, you know, uh, nine guys in the box all the time on the two yard line. So um, I think it was a, you know, a, you know, a natural uh, movement into some other things uh, to, you know, to take care of the heavy boxes that you see down there. And um, so, you know, that's, you know, a lot of times I do, I don't like slowing down in the open field at all. You know, I mean, that's like, you know, I want to make, you know, there's, you know, unless it's third and one or something and we want to, you know, get some people in there. Uh, but we're going to try and wear you out all the way down there. Um, and, you know, there's going to be times we keep going, but I, I, I think it's been um, a, a nice addition and everybody's uh, kind of been open to it and working hard at it. And it's been fun. Warren, with Christian Beal Smith, what were some of the things that intrigued you about him when you when he joined the program, and and also with a guy who's a local recruit? What are some of the assets um, that come with that, and maybe some of the challenges as well? <laughs> right. Um, well, I mean, Christian was a a huge recruit for us. I mean, he had a he was one of those kids that uh, we usually don't, you know, a lot of times. Uh, land at Wake Forest with a high percentage. Uh, he did have a, an incredible amount of offers uh, from a lot of different places, but I think his, his dream was always to come to Wake Forest uh, since he was a kid, um, which, was, which was great for us. So, uh, you know, so, you know, we knew he was a, you know, a very talented kid and was one of those guys that uh, we were very excited to get and knew he was going to have a great career. Um, now, you know, we've just been fortunate enough, to be honest with you, over the years to have some other really good running backs, you know. So, I mean, you know, between Cade Carney and, um, you know, all those guys that have been there uh, through those years, Colburn, et cetera, um, he was always, it was always nice because we were able to, to keep him in there developing and didn't have to play him early. Um, but, you know, there, there, are, it's, there are definitely – uh, challenges sometimes to having a kid who, who just, uh, you know, went to high school right down the road and all his friends are still in town and all those things. Um, but, uh, you know, Christian's handled his business and he's a, he's a neat kid. And I couldn't say, you know, really one bad thing about having Christian Beal in our program at all. I mean, it's been, it's been awesome in every way. Coach, you mentioned all the running backs that you've had in the past. Now you have uh, Ken Walker and Christian Bill Smith, a little different than Colburn and, and Cade right. in the way. Right, right. Talk about that explosiveness, though, I mean, that you have now with those two. How exciting is that? Or, you know, how well are you – or how happy are you with the running game right now? Yeah, I mean, it's – you know, again, we're – those guys are 
just you know extremely talented and like you said I mean to say they're better or worse or or you know how different whatever than those other guys um all those guys have been effective in their own way and, and that's been uh, a big part of what we do we're always going to run the ball um and we're always going to need guys uh that have enough speed but that have power and uh both those guys, although they're elusive and fast and have changed direction, uh, those guys can still, they're going to lower their pads and they're going to run, they're going to take the edge off of safety now. Um, I think they're a little bit underrated in that department. You know, Colburn and, and Carney did an awesome job of that. You just sort of run people over and, you know, spin and go. I mean, but, but these kids have really uh, been a nice mix of speed, agility, and power. Um, and, they're really a, a, a perfect fit for what we're trying to do right now um, with our run game. How would you grade your offensive line so far three games in? Ooh, boy, I don't know if I'm going to give them a grade, but, uh, but I would say, you know, again, we're, um, we're getting better. You know, we had, you know, uh, Michael Jurgens took his first start at center against Clemson, and he had, a, he had his hands full. Um, you know, you got, you improved again, NC State, then you improved again. Uh, I, I'd say we're, we're getting better. And, and that's a, that's a tough spot to, uh, you know, when you're doing just walkthroughs, all of that, all the things you're not, you know, we missed in the offseason. That's a tough spot to develop at when you can't lift weights all summer. And when you can't, uh, you know, do inside run and have live football. Um, and you can't have a coach around you all summer doing the drills and the football, you know, that, that's a tough spot to improve at when all, with all the, the stuff that's been going on. Um, so we are improving though each game. We've improved during training camp. Again, that's, that's a work in progress. I, you know, I'm, I'm happy with where we're at, but there's no way I could give them an A because an A would mean they've reached the ceiling, and I think we're far from the ceiling. So we'll continue to get better. Warren, Coach Coach Clawson told us something after the Campbell game that basically said he didn't know that much about this year's team just because there's only three games. It's a pretty wide variety of of talent level for those three games that you've played. How do you get to know the identity of a team that's going to play its fourth game in the middle of October? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we just got out of what we, we were meeting this morning – doing some the Virginia game plan. We got done. I just looked at everybody and I, I go, can you believe we've only played three games so far? You know, it's like, we seems like we've been here forever. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's an odd feeling now. It really, you know, it's, it's, and to say we know our football team, we don't, we really don't. Uh, you know, there's, especially when you're young too, you know, you're, they're, they're developing who's, who's, who's going to still grow to be a leader. You know, there's, um, there's just so much, so many un unanswered questions, but we are going into murderer's row, you know, coming up, we got a long stretch of some very good football teams. Um, and we're going to find out quick, even, you know, those next three, you know, Virginia, Virginia Tech, Syracuse, um, that's, those are some challenging, uh, challenging games. So it's hard to go up to Syracuse too. And, uh, so no, we don't know our team. I love our team. I love our kids. They're working hard and they're getting better. So I, I like that part about it. I think I know that uh, we have the right kids um, and they're continue to get better. You know, where our ceiling is and where everybody's gonna be at in five weeks, I don't know. It's gonna be very interesting. I know. It's, it's not like Wake Forest is unique and everybody had the same summer and fall camp, but given the way that Dave lays out formulas to win games, given personnel and, and given what you guys can do and can't do, has that affected Wake Forest more than other places? Is that something that, you know, that's kind of unique to Wake, laying out the formula, and that's made it a little more difficult than other schools would be dealing with right now? Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, you always try and be positive. Um, 
but I do think if you weighed everything out that the virus has done to affect college football and to affect our program specifically, you would say there's been way more things that hurt our growth as a program at Wake Forest specifically than other programs um, by this for, for sure in a lot of ways. Um, but, you know, that's our, our job is to find a way to dig ourselves out fast, you know, and figure it out. Um, so, so 100%, uh, you know, this, this is not, this does not allow Wake Forest to be who Wake Forest can be, to develop our kids and to, to get those kids to, to be competitive um, with guys that don't, don't necessarily need to be developed as a team as much as our guys. That's our formula. So, yes, you're right on with that. And, um, you know, so we definitely got uh, some catching up to do, 100%. Coach Roger, what have you seen from uh, Sam so far this season? I would say um, that, you know, he has been definitely mentally uh, very good. There's been times I think he's still trying to compensate for some of the guys he has at different spots at times um, and at, try, at times trying to get him going and things like that. Um, He's, but he is playing, he knows our offense. He's playing within our offense most of the time at times. Like I said, he's, he tried to do a couple of things with those guys, but um, I do think he appreciates uh, where he, you know, where he can be with this if he just does his job. And uh, he's been pretty good at that so far. And, you know, he's missed a, a couple of passes here and there, but I mean, if you watch, the accuracy that he's had uh, on a lot of those footballs, fitting things into tight windows, um, which that's kind of the growth of a quarterback. You come out as a young kid and you make a lot of dumb mistakes. You're just, you know, you're all aggressive. You're throwing it there, you're throwing it there. This gets picked, that gets, you know, tipped up. You look like an idiot. And then you go into a shell, you know what I mean? Because you're like, I don't want to make any more mistakes. And you get into the shell and then you, then, then it progresses. to Then you start coming out of your shell that you get that, that courage again and those guts to try and start fitting those throws in there and hanging in the pocket and knowing when to do it uh, and when to cut the edge of things. And he's coming out the other end of that shell right now. So you've seen him, he's played some pretty courageous throws over the last three weeks. Um, knock on wood, he hasn't had an interception, you know, in, in, in three games. I'm sure he's, he's got, you know, I mean, that's just the football, but uh, that's been a you know great part of his growth. Um, and he's very much determined uh, to be the best he can be. I think he's very serious about this right now. For a lighthearted kid who likes to, you know, um, you know, in, enjoy things. I mean, he he has gotten very serious about football. And uh, again, I think he's still going to continue to improve. You're not you're not at the cusp of him yet. He's still got a lot a lot of football yet to get where I think he can be. But um, I'm happy with uh, the courage he's shown in the pocket and the courage he's throwing, throwing the ball uh, against some pretty good defenses. So uh, we're, we're excited to see where it's going to go. Are you pleasantly surprised with the early season production from the slot receiver position? Yeah, 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 no doubt. I, uh, I mean, you know, you look at us back in April, we wouldn't have, you know, thought that that was really where the ball was going to go a lot. Um, and then, you know, things change, right, as they do all the time. And uh, I think we knew Marin was going to be good. You know, he had a, a couple of good practices in the spring, of those five. Um, and Jaquari has always been one of those guys who's been a little bit frustrated because he's never been able to be the starter, you know. He's always, you know, he was Dorch, and then Dorch left, and he thought he was going to be the starter. Then Kendall got moved, and he wasn't the starter. You know, so he's had kind of an up-and-down, rocky road. He's played a little bit here and there. Um, and then, you know, I think, I think he's finally in a, in a really neat spot right now where – 
he's really playing hard. He's competing for the football. He's playing with detail. Marin is just that that's just his nature. I mean, that kid is just a competitive, um, reliable, uh, talented kid. So though, so with Jaquari really coming into it now and finding his his zone, so to speak, um, and Marin just, you know, becoming who who we you know who he could be that's you know the ball you know, we've done some things even more to try and get the ball to go there you know as the year goes on so um yeah that's that's been awesome and that's what we're looking for to hopefully happen on the outside at some point here in the next couple of weeks coach to piggyback off that you know the outside uh receiver where do you see some improvement in those areas? Yeah, yeah. Right now, there's just we're just not playing with a lot of detail, um, and you know we're a little bit we're very sloppy out there right now, to be honest with you. Um, and those kids know it. I'm not saying anything they don't know. Uh, we remind them of it every day. Uh, so, so th- you know, they they got to grow up. Uh, we got talent out there. You got good kids. They're not uncoachable. Um, they're just, you know, right now they're just surviving out there. And, and uh, um, I think they're figuring out now slowly, you know, what they need to do. They're, we're still not there. Uh, but playing Virginia, playing Virginia Tech, playing Syracuse, playing those games, I think we're going to get there. Um, but, you know, it's a, it's a lot of kids who haven't played football. And uh, you're, you know, when you line up a kid in, in your face, it's, you know, really good, you know, every play. And sticking his hands in your chest and you got to figure it out and see the rest of the picture. Um, it's a process, but they're, they're good enough. We have a lot of improvement to do. Uh, and we need to get there 100% for us to be good. You know, for us, for us to win some games, it's got to happen. Can they get there in the middle of the season? <laughs> it's a, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping. Yeah, I mean, it's like uh, you know, I know when we got, you know, when we were getting toward that first game, you know, and I was just like ready to just jump off a bridge somewhere. Um, you know, Dave's like, hey, he's like, don't worry, this is just like in 16 when we started all those young guys against Tulane, and Tulane almost beat our butt because those kids couldn't get open for an inch. Um, so, uh, you know, and those kids all became really good players, and uh, they all got a shot at the NFL, you know, all those guys that started that game. And at that point, we were like, you know, what are we going to do? Um, so uh, it's, you know, Every kid's different, I think, you know, how quickly they can mature and how quickly they can figure it out. So uh, we are, I, I think we can do it, uh, but we're, you know, it's not like it's a one week fix right now, you know, so it's, it's not a one week fix, that's for sure. So uh, we've got some work to do, they got some work to do. Um, and it's it's going to affect the outcome of games for sure. So we got to get it done. Yeah, all due respect to Tulane, it's a little different opening against them and opening against Clemson. <laughs> right. No, t- no doubt. <laughs> yes, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Anything else for Coach Guys? All right. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right, guys, I'll take for questions. Les, you want to take the first one again? Hey, Coach, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Just kind of what I asked uh, Coach Ruggiero a few minutes ago, uh, you're in a strange period where you, you've got to break two out of three weeks and you've got an FCS game in the middle. Um, how were you able to effectively use this time in terms of, do you even know enough about your squad with the short, you know, small sample size to know what you need to, to work on? Yeah, we know, yeah. The first three games certainly helped us with what we need to work on. There's no question about it. So, um, 
the be honest with you, the, the these buys for us have been couldn't have been at a better time. We needed it. So this was an opportunity for us to work some of these young some of these young DBs and get these kids more comfortable with what we're doing. Um, work some of these young safeties with you know the communications and stuff like that. And um, you know it is not it is really in a way this has not been a bye week for us. This hasn't been two bye weeks for us. And the kids have handled it really, really well. They have, um, I mean, it's been like a game week. Like we're just, we're, we're in a race against the clock to get older faster. So like for me, this was, this was huge. You say it's not like a bye week In which ways, in what ways was, was it different for you guys than what a normal bye week would be like coach? Like a bye week you're you're typically, you're still kind of getting ready for the next opponent. You know, you play, we, like we, Past couple of days, we haven't worried one second about UVA. In the in the, the practices we've had this past week, we didn't even talk about UVA. It was all about getting us better and getting us better at what we do. And um, you know, it was like it was it was intense. I mean, it was intense learning. It was intense, you know, trying to get better. The kids had, you know, we had a purpose of what we wanted to get accomplished with with the kids and the coaches and um you know, every new, everybody had a very clear goal for what we wanted to accomplish, you know, over those couple practices. And I think we, we did it. It was good. It was really good. So. Lyle, I'm curious uh, what exactly entails intense learning. Is that kind of some harsh, harsh truths coming forward, whether it's in practice or in the film room? Yeah. I mean, like we got, you know, we have some, you know, we have a freshman corner that's playing. We have a true freshman safety that's playing. We have, you know, uh, a red, uh, sophomore safety that has had a broken foot and he's been out for six months. And, you know, we don't have Nasir Greer. We don't have, you know, we don't have these guys. We have these other young guys that we have to get ready right now. And that's what I mean by intense, you know, it's we've got to master these things. We can't have oopses and my bads and stuff like that. Like there's no, there, there's no room for that error moving forward. And we just had to clean those things up. There's certain areas that you guys thought would be stronger parts of the defense that haven't been as strong as, as they should have been in your mind. Yeah, I thought we'd be, yeah, I think we, we, probably tried to manipulate a little bit too much to put more on the defensive line, the linebackers, which wasn't fair to them. I don't know if they're not playing as well as they should be. Maybe we probably put them in situations where, you know, maybe I probably put them in situations. I'll take the blame on that where I probably put them in a little bit, you know, not advantageous situations, you know, out of leverage and stuff like that. Thinking that we would just, we'd kill it up front. And I mean, in, in college football these days, everybody's got good players. So, um, you know, it's probably a little bit, a little bit on them, a little bit on me. They got to play better and I got to coach better, so. You mentioned not having Nasir. Is there anything in the form of updates in terms of Nasir, uh, Kobe Davis and Luke Masterson, I guess? Yeah, I, Kobe, um, I mean, Kobe's, he's out of the boot. He's walking. You know, how long? I don't know. I, I, nobody knows. But as soon as he's out, as soon as he's ready to go, it, it was, you know, it was a high ankle sprain. So as soon as he can get going, um, he's going. Um, but he looks good. Like, I was kind of shocked. I mean, he went up from out of the boot to walking, and he kind of looks normal. So that's that's a good first sign. Um, Nasir is going to be practicing this week, which is – huge um you know and he's getting he's getting better i don't think he came back too early i just think that when he came back i don't know if he was 100 and now we're just getting we're trying to get him to the point where we can get him like we don't want to play him at 80 and then you know he plays at 80 percent on saturday and then on monday he goes back to 60 percent and then we hope to get him back by 80 like we're trying to get out of that whole Deal. We're trying to get him back to being a hundred percent, and then playing the rest of the season. And I think we're close to getting him to that point. And then Luke, Luke's gonna, Luke's gonna be week. To, it's gonna be week to week. 
Um, I really don't. I don't. I don't have a timetable on Luke. Um, just is what it is. Just we'll find out when we find out. I, I honestly, I don't know. It's a, it's his foot. I, I'm not a doctor. I have no idea. Planner, fresh. I couldn't even tell you what the hell it is. I can tell you about knees and I can tell you about ankle sprains. I can tell you about shoulders when you're talking about like people's bottom of their foot. Like I can't tell you anything. So So you're a doctor from like the shin up. Yeah. Like I can, well, I can do ankles. I can do like low ankle sprains. I know those aren't bad. I know high ankle sprains are bad. I know knees, ACL, you say that I'm like, Oh damn. You talk about like, plantar fasciitis or something i'm like i don't even know what the hell that is so um like shoulders you know i'm good with that like you put their arm out if they can if they can hold it up they're good but bottom of the feet i got no idea i know that the one thing we do around here is that we all, we have um golf balls in all the meeting rooms and they're supposed to rub their bottom of their feet on the golf ball i heard that's supposed to be good but Apparently, Luke hasn't been doing that enough. Man. Coach, I mean, unfortunately, that was the one position that you really couldn't deal with a lot of injuries and, and issues there. You talked, you, about getting those, <laughs> <laughs> you talked about getting those young guys, kind of getting yeah. them away from the, oops, my bad. How has yeah. that gone? Awesome. You know, how important is that to kind of get that focus on them like, we can't have these mistakes. Yeah, like I think um, it's 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 like a fine line. Like I think initially these kids, when they're freshmen, and even redshirt freshmen or sophomores, I think they're just trying to get lined up to some regard. If that makes sense, they're trying to get lined up. They're trying to make the right communication. They're trying to be in the right place, be in the right defense, and there's no detail to what they're doing if that makes sense. Like they're just trying to keep their head above water. And like, you can't, you can't have successful defenses in this league. If that's the mindset, like we need to, we needed to push past that and get to the point where now these kids, they know what they're doing. They know what they're saying. They know where they're aligning. And now they can start playing with some detail, you know, and that that's not just the safeties, that's the freshman corners. And, you know, there, there's just there was so little detail to what they were doing, um, you know. And it's that's that's what that's why a lot of times freshmen don't play. You know, they don't have the detail. It takes a special kid to come in as a freshman and and play with detail, and it doesn't happen very often. There, those are the special ones, you know. And that's what we're, that's that's the the thing that we've been we've been pushing. You know, we, I mean, we've, we've repped the hell out of these kids. I mean, we're talking 100 reps a day, you know, in these practices of these kids and just grinding J.J. Roberts and grinding Nick Anderson and grinding Gavin Holmes and grinding Kalen Carson and just trying to get these kids to, to get to that point. I think Clawson always says, you know, it's a, it's a thousand rep thing. Once you hit a thousand reps, then you can start playing with some detail. You need those thousand reps to get it going. That's where that we're trying to get the thousand reps right now, so we can get to a thousand and one, and now we can start playing with detail. But that's where we're at with those guys. Lyle, Coach Clawson told us something after the Campbell game that um, basically he he didn't know as much about this team at this point, and you guys are going to be playing your your fourth game of the year, and it's going to be the middle of October in. How how well do you know this team now, and how well are you, are you going to know them in a in a week and a day when you line up against Virginia? Um, we're getting to know. I would say, and I, again, I get, that was the other good thing for the bye week, because um, we had like three games where we could kind of take a step back and look. Okay, who are we? Who are these kids? You know, what are we all about? And it gave us, a, you know, a chance to step back and say, okay, what are really our strengths and really what are our weaknesses? And, you know, who's our alphas and who are guys that are just kind of trying to survive out there? So you, you kind of put all that into perspective, I think, over the bye week. I think we did that. Um, went back and did a lot of self-scout. You know, uh, a lot of meetings with the players. 
one-on-one -on -one meetings with the players. Hey, here's where you're at. Here's where you need to be. T stuff like that. You know, a lot of evaluation, self-evaluation. And um, I think we're further along than we were. I know it seems like, uh, yeah, I guess it is. It's only, you know, it was a week ago. It's Campbell. It feels like it was three weeks ago. Because we've put, I mean, we've put a lot of hours in as a staff, obviously, but we spent a lot of time with the kids over the last five days or seven days, a ton of time with the kids, which has been really good. What were the, and it wasn't, and it wasn't a, it wasn't game plan. Like when you, you get caught up in game planning. So it wasn't about game plan. It was about us. Sorry, cut you off. You're, you're good. Um, given that is this, is the last three weeks, other than the Campbell game being in there, has it kind of been an extension of fall camp where you're still trying to get to know these guys and you're doing more self-inflection than you're doing game planning? Yeah. I mean, you could say that. You could say that. You know, I think coming out of camp, you know, you thought you knew who you were. Now after three games, you know who you are. I guess that's the best way to say it. And, you know, we'll make adjustments. We'll move. And we'll groove with it. And again, we've just got to, we've said it from the beginning, we got to be an ascending football team. Well, we better be an ascending defense because there's nowhere else to go. You know what I mean? So we the only one way to go. That's the way I'm looking at it right now. And I think we are, I think we will be, you know, I'm not promising any shutouts or any hundred yard games, but I think, you know, I think we'll be better and we'll consistently be better as, as the season goes on, as long as we can you know, stay somewhat healthy. Stay away from the, the corona. For better or for worse, it's at a position where you seemingly already have a lot of depth. But what did you think you saw out of the two young defensive linemen that got in the game late last week, uh, Jasheen Davis and Will Smart? Um, I'm pretty excited. First start with Will. Will's been practicing a heck of a lot better the past two weeks. He showed up a lot more. And then it was good to see him get in the game and do it. That was cool. And I think Justine, you know, he's young, he's raw, he's, uh, but he's talented. He's going to be a good football player. I mean, he's going to be a really good football player. You just got to bring him along the right way, you know. And, um, but he, he's got a chance to be an impact player for us in the future, for sure. Is it just me or is that a position group where you probably feel pretty good about where you are right now? and where it projects for the coming two yeah, to four seasons. For sure, for sure. Because you got, you know, you got J.J., DeCore Johns, who's, who's young, and, you know, he's up to 250 now. And then you've got Shamar, who's young. And he's up to 240 now. And then you've got this other kid that we didn't, uh, quite honestly, I don't think we knew. I don't know if we thought he was going to be as good as he is. So... That's, I mean, that's really good. That's a one position. That's at the weak side defensive end. So obviously next year with, you know, Boogie leaving, you know, and you still have Rondell, Bothroyd, who might, you know, who might be one of the best ones we got. Um, he'll be back shortly. And that's, and you got Isaiah Cheney, and I mean, you, you, you got Royce Francis. I mean, there's, there's a lot of guys at that position that have been productive and play a lot of football. So yes, I think we're in good shape for the next two to three years. Coach, you uh, were able to force some turnovers against Campbell. Was that a point of emphasis? And is that going to be something that you're going to talk to your defense about trying to do more of throughout the season? It always is. Like, it's crazy how it works. But, like, you need – if you want to be a good football team, you need 25 of them. Like, when you really boil it down, if you want to be a top 25 football team in the country, you got to have 25 of them in a year. It doesn't sound like a lot. Say you play 12 games, you need 25 of them. If you can get 25 to 30 – you're going to have a good season. Um, so, yeah, that is – it's always been I – mean, that's, that's kind of our mantra around here. And it was good that it happened. Um, we need to keep that going for sure. I mean, give our ball the offense, take it away. I think that would, that's, that's the key, obviously one of the keys, to, the keys to every game for us. Lyle, when you guys have these Saturdays without games, do you spend time watching – games against future opponents at home do you spend time at the office watching those games like what's your what's your typical routine on a Saturday with if Wake doesn't have a game my wife DVRs them all for me so then I can come home and watch them without because it's fun to watch it without the uh 
you know, you can watch in between plays, like how fast are they going? Who's signaling? What's the operation time? You always like to watch the TV copy and it's cool when my wife DVRs it because then I can just fly through the game real quick, you know. Um, this Saturday, we practice in the morning. I think we're done at noon. We'll get ready for Sunday's practice. And then, you know, we'll, we'll probably catch the second half, maybe as a staff in, in, the, in the room and then, and then we'll get out. And I think, I think it's uh, Miami and Clemson. On is that Saturday night seven? Yeah. yeah, like that's a game I'd like to not be a football coach and just watch. <laughs> yeah, like sometimes it's hard to do that, and especially in season. But it, you know, you can kill two birds with one stone. I mean, we're still football. You know, we're still football fans. That's going to be a good Saturday night game. I mean, let's let's be real. And then we do play Miami down the road, so I'm going to learn something about Miami. Does that also help having already played Clemson and you might know some of the things that they're trying to do and you've already you've studied it from one aspect and you've got Miami to study in the future? Yeah, yeah, and we've watched a lot. I've watched a lot. We've watched a lot of Clemson defense too because we're watching obviously UVA now. There's a lot of crossover seems like right now, but um, so we're watching a ton of Clemson defense and now we're going to turn around and. Saturday night and watch I'm gonna watch Clemson's defense knowing pretty much what they're doing now and then watch them against Miami's offense see how they adjust see how they try to take some certain things away from Miami I had a chance to watch Miami last week against uh what was it Florida State that last week last Saturday it looked pretty damn good and I'm not looking ahead I'm just telling you I, I was a casual observer it looked pretty damn good on film or on TV yeah, that was two weeks ago. The weekend you guys had off, I think. Was that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. I caught I caught that game, and it, I mean, it was like thirty-five nothing, like like yeah. whatever, thirty-five-seven or whatever it was. Woo. Good, good, good football team. Lyle, how would you best summarize what's going on right now with the linebackers? I think a lot of folks would probably look at what NC State did and and be a little bit worried about that group based upon what the Wolfpack did against you guys. Right. Is that an anomaly or is that kind of where they're at right now? No, I think, you know, again, like some of it was on them and a lot of it was on me. You know, I don't know if I put them in the best position and I don't know if when they were in position, they made the plays they need to. So I, again, it's just, it was a, it was, it was, it wasn't a good night for them or for me. I mean, I'll be honest with you. That's what it was. Um, I don't think that's a true reflection of who they are. Um, I think that they took it very personal and they're working at it to get the things that, that weren't good corrected. Um, you know, with that being said, I think, you know, we've, we've got to start playing all four of those guys. You know, we started, we got to start playing, you know, those guys, we got to stop overplaying, you know, two of those guys. I think we played Jacquez and, and Ryan probably too much in those games and we've got to start spreading the wealth a little bit around there. I think Chase Jones would be one of the other guys. Who who yeah. else is in the four it's the, rotation? It's the DJ and Chase Monroe, DJ Taylor and Chase Monroe. Those guys, like those five, got to start. We got to start equaling the reps out a little bit. You know, I don't know if Jacquez, it you know, he's not the biggest linebacker. I don't know if it's fair to him to be playing, you know, sixty, sixty-five snaps at, you know. It's just not what he should be doing. He should be on our third down package, and he should be playing. You know, limit not limited, but you know, a smaller amount of the first and second down reps. Um, he's just not. He's just not going to be able to hold up at his, at his weight. So, and that's again, that comes back on me. Comes back on him, and we got to get it fixed. Could part of that be trying to fit him into what Justin was doing last year, and maybe he doesn't have the same kind of stamina? Sure. Yeah, it's exactly what it is. You know. We thought, you know, because he did it for the last part of the last year, you know, for the last five or six games. So we just assumed that, you know, every opponent's different and how every opponent attacks you is different. Obviously, going into the NC State game, obviously, we didn't know that's what they were going to do on offense. You can tell. And I just, you know, I did a poor job adjusting in game. Um, but, you know, if that was the, if I knew that was the plan, I don't know if that would have been a 65 play game for Jack West. Anything else for Campo? All right. Thanks a lot.
I appreciate it, guys. Take take care. Have a good weekend. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. You got it.